Hello amateurs, welcome to another episode of Hot Topics from the Amateur Rugby Podcast, recording via Facebook Live on Wednesday 16th of December 2020. We're going to get straight into it today, so let's go and see who the mystery guest is today. Mystery guest, would you please reveal yourself? Hey everyone, I'm Charlie Clark. Um, I've originally um, been playing rugby now for since I was about eight or nine years old. Um, started my rugby down at the local club at Batsy Ironsides in South West London. Some of you may have heard of it. It's where um, Mr. Kyle Sinclair played his rugby originally. Um, I'm currently a student at University of Leeds. And instead of playing for the university, I've opted to go and play for a local team based up in the north of the city. And I've been playing there since my first year. It's now my, well, third slash fourth year. I was had a year out in London last year. Um, but yeah, no, still very much a loyal member. Um, another thing to know as well, and an interesting rugby fact is, uh, for any of you young people out there who are desperately wanting to get out of the front row, it is possible. I was a um, hooker at school and club the whole time. And then when I was told I wasn't big enough anymore, I'm now um, playing at number seven, which is uh, much better for the fitness and less tough on the neck. So <laughs> again, there is hope for some of you. <laughs> Good stuff, Charlie. I went the other way. I went from the back row and ended up in the front row. So, you know, <laughs> well, it's, you know uh, yeah. on the flip side, they need more of you. You make more first teams if you're a prop. <laughs> Amateur rugby. <laughs> That is that is very true. Now, Charlie, the topic we are going to be talking about today is rugby players who are doing these incredible runs for charity. Um, obviously, we've had, um, I've forgotten his name now, but the guy who did the run for Rob Burrow recently, yeah. the rugby league fella, um, did seven marathons in seven days. Um, I've, I've had Andrew Henderson on the podcast recently who did an amazing challenge just this Saturday gone. But Charlie, you've also done a pretty incredible challenge yourself. So I'd just like to hear, first of all, tell me what the challenge was. So and, the challenge um, originally, at least, was to um, run in about the space of a month, um, roughly, 206 miles. And the reason for that was that's the distance from Bastia the Ironsides, um, you know, where I've played with my boyhood club, where I've, you know, you know, played from age nine to age 18 and still do play now occasionally to my university club that have sort of adopted me up there since my first year there. Um, so that was the idea. Um, it took a slightly different turn, which I'm sure we can, you know, maybe cover later. But in the end, we managed to complete it in a much shorter length of time in exactly three weeks. Um, so that was, you know, brilliant, totally unforeseen, something I would have never sort of seen myself managing to complete. But in the end, we were very pleased, very proud and, you know, had a brilliant reception so i can only be absolutely chuffed with how it turned out yeah amazing mate well done i was obviously um following you via instagram and all that kind of stuff and i was you know just the energy is it built built to a climax was was wonderful now you you said that was the distance between the two clubs you didn't run between the two clubs did you no, you did no was, yeah. was, was oh, you was running in... around the leeds area yeah, yeah. So around the Le around the Leeds area, I often did um, a very common run because it was a perfect kind of ten miles. Was from my house to my to Leo's Rugby Club and back was what right. I was probably one of the most common ones as well. There's a nice um, canal route up um, up near Leeds as well. It's flat as well, which is unlike most runs in Leeds. Any any of you are looking for from Leeds and like their running, they'll know that definitely trying to find a run in Leeds where you're not plagued by hill after hill after hill is um, is a, is a challenge in itself. Um, but definitely, you know, look, sort of all sorts of runs in different places around that area. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a friend. Uh, the hills are not my friend, that's for sure. When I go out <laughs> running, I, <laughs> no, I try to avoid them as best I can. Um, now, so tell me about it. That's obviously a huge challenge to do 206 miles in what turned out to be three weeks. Mm. What kind of training did you do beforehand? What kind of preparation? I mean, it was, it was an interesting one because the whole idea was, um, as it wasn't a kind of pace challenge, um, obviously we've seen the, um, again, uh, the rugby league player who's run the, you know, the marathons in under seven days, the whole thing was him trying to, well, I mean, I don't know if it was him attempting to, but he managed to unbelievably do them all in under four hours. So the idea was kind of just to grind it out. So in terms of training for the running specifically, it perhaps wasn't um, necessarily in the lead up to it as much as I've done in the past. However, just this summer, so in July, that was when I'd done my first kind of running challenge where I planned myself, um, planned myself a marathon to do. 
um, as my kind of sort of as lo- as the project for kind of lockdown one, as it were, when um, we all had the despair of no rugby, no gyms, and no kind of uh, any sort of sports events or anything happening then. Um, so I suppose there was kind of uh, elements of residual fitness from that and um, pre-season rugby training and lots of lots of games of touch, which is much more intense than um, I would almost say as hard as doing some of those really long runs. The kind of thing of not having to stop for scrums or breakdowns is certainly very good for good for fitness and um, endurance from that perspective. Um, but, you yeah, know, in terms of the sort of training and preparation, it was much more around, um, you know, coming up with the idea how it would get done, how I would split the mileage. And we kind of sort of thought it was almost it was almost kind of a training plan in itself rather than trying to, you know, cut cut it down into any sort of speed. Yeah, sure. Um, you're saying we a lot. Who's who's we? Who was who was the gang that kind of co-created this? Um, well, it was actually um, so. I mean, in terms of the sort of mechanisms behind it, I first suggested it to the um, Leo's club captain um, because, again, it was um, coming to terms of the fact that we weren't going to be playing rugby for a very long time. Um, it was, you know, in amidst all the announcements that oh, there's probably another lockdown coming. Um, all the sort of tier systems. I mean, again. Um, Leeds was put into those sort of tier systems much earlier so again there was sort of uncertainty around um, what we do then so there was a lot of meeting with um, with him uh, equally on uh, that level too there was uh, planning with the Ironsides club captain as to how we can kind of get, sort of get both the clubs involved get them running and get them going and then actually the um, partner charity Looseheads um, they had and they definitely played a role in trying to sort of conduct sort of mileage and you know how we may promote the challenge and you know what kind of sort of endorsement we could get um so no yeah i had a i had a great team behind me at least uh, throughout the whole time but definitely those were the sort of ones that really had assisted me in the early phases brilliant brilliant um so let's talk about the actual run itself or the runs i should say yeah. W- yeah. were there any what were the real challenging points were there any bits where you were like really struggling and needed help or was it all kind of plain sailing how did you find it I mean, the, the biggest setback, which you may have seen on the Instagram, was when it was literally the day before I was meant to start the run in the first plan. Um, and it was due it was due to have this whole thing. Oh, uh, Batsy Ironsides has a massive military connection. Um, the uh, the guy who the run was sort of in honour of had also, you know, had a big background in the army too. So we thought, perfect. November 11th, ideal time to start this. 11 miles, uh, pay respects to, you know, um, respects to our soldiers, to our military and enshrine it in a run and unfortunately um the monday before that or the tuesday it was a wednesday we were meant to start it um my housemate tested positive for covid so it was then going to be apparent that we was going to have to you know delay the run for 14 days um or you know yeah i mean however long it was um and you know that was really really tough um i was really excited to try and sort of get it going um, especially on a day that was kind of so poignant, so topical. Everybody in my kind of sort of rugby group chats were, you know, saying, oh, we're really, really behind you. I've, you know, donated however much money to your Just Giving page. I've, you know, gone out on a run today. I can't wait for you to join. And then I just have to be like, OK, well, sorry, I'm going to now have to spend two weeks sat in my bedroom waiting <laughs> till I can start. And it just makes you feel a little, it made me feel quite a bit help, maybe a bit helpless, really. You know, you just sort of something you've been so raring to go to and you just have to wait. But I think on the flip side of that, that just really, really made me want to hit the ground running when I could much, much earlier. And that was sort of again, I I don't know how much you would have sort of followed on the Instagram, but that's what really inspired me to do on the first day doing the 32 miles in 24 hours. I think that, you know, that's a sort of fitness challenge and feat that I would have never seen myself doing. You know, it's I mean, I've, I've, I've run a marathon before, but I never would have thought I could have covered that distance in any space of time at, at all, let alone in a day. So I think that um, that was even though it was such a sort of setback and something that was so tough, it just kind of added more fuel to the fire and made me want to complete it. And I think that when I saw I was making all this progress, and probably around the kind of halfway through the second week, I was like, you know, I can I can finish this off in three weeks. I really, and that's what I want to do. I want to be able to say that, yeah, this two hundred and six mile run was done in three weeks exactly, and you just had that drive to get going more. Amazing, amazing, really uh, inspirational stuff. 
You mentioned about this run being in honor of a person. Would you like to talk a little bit about that and explain what happened there? Yeah, yeah. So um, back in, I think it was sort of May, June time, um, a friend and a dear, dear member of Batsy Ironsides um, committed committed suicide. And he was um, he was a wonderful, wonderful club man. Um, you know, would always be down at the club every Saturday. He was captain of the um, social team. So, you know, always down trying to get more people to play. He'd sometimes help out coaching with the Colts too. Um, so when I had my um, had some games for the under twenty ones, he'd always want to come to try and see if he could, you know, get more kind of liaison between the under twenty ones and the seniors. Um, and he was just, you know, he was a wonderful guy, a great friend to everybody, and it was obviously so sad to see him go. And that's sort of what inspired me to do the run in the first place, because even though um, this year is, you know, something completely un- unforeseen and awful, this the elements of lockdowns just in clearly being for the greater good do take their toll on people's mental health and their emotional well-being and for me as well i know that if i've had a difficult week either with work or with university or in personal life or in any reason i know that if on saturday i can you know put my boots and my gum shield in my bag know that i can go out there run into some people for 80 minutes regardless of whether i win or lose and then can have a drink with the team afterwards that turns my week from a three out of ten into six or seven at least so i think that it was what i wanted to try and do was try and sort of bring the idea of two great rugby clubs really close to my heart mental health which is an issue incredibly close to my heart too and running and fitness challenges all together and that's where this whole kind of great rugby run was inspired from and I think that was why um, Loose Heads were such a perfect charity to work for as well, trying to sort of get this whole idea of um, talking and making kind of mental health in rugby world and the sporting world a sort of safe place to talk. And I think they're really, really doing a brilliant job. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you're dead right, obviously. Um, and it just, I guess, people people are struggling at the moment. There's no mm-hmm. question, probably more than ever before, I'd say, with mental mm-hmm. health. So just reaching out to people, just randomly just reach out to people and say how how are you doing in your mm, account yeah. all that kind of stuff i think that kind of thing really really helps mm, completely and i've tried to sort of enshrine that message into what i took on my rugby run as well um there was one post where um i was saying that it was i was doing a run and it was probably outside of the 32 miles in 24 hours it was the hardest run i did and 10 mile run at that point into the challenge it's a long run it's a big run but it's not it's well well within my capabilities from a physical perspective i can you know i I can done that i can do that i've done that i've done much more than that in the challenge so that wasn't the problem however long day of um uh, university deadlines it was freezing cold it was like you know fucking it down outside of you know a full full yorkshire winter's day was in full swing outside um and you know you know when you're like you're running and you're coming up a hill and then you're kind of wading through your fourth puddle of the run adding extra kilos to your shoes and it's just oh my god it's just never ending but again i just wanted to stop and i just wanted to turn back and go home but all those kind words and all that everyone coming to me and saying what you're doing is so great you know i really want to wish you luck i want to come on a run with you i want to go out running for you i want to you know donate x amount to your just giving page that's what really drove me through. And that's why I wanted to say to everybody, just never underestimate the power of well done or I hope you're doing well or how hey, how are you doing? It can really, really make all the difference because at the end of the day, had I not been receiving all those messages and all that support, who knows if I could have made it through that run or any of it for that matter. Yeah, very good point. And I think whilst on the men- mental health side as well, just getting out and doing something is so beneficial. Uh, I've, I've been a little bit down in the dumps the last couple of weeks here where I am. I went out for a run last night and it just like it felt like the weight came off me. I ended up running nearly a half marathon just randomly oh, wow. out, out, of, out of nowhere almost. And you enjoyed uh, doing that? I loved it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was absolutely buzzing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's another thing. Obviously, check in with people, but get out and do something. Change your environment if you're oh, feeling yeah. a little bit down and try and um, do something active and um, with a purpose as well. It's mm. really beneficial. So tying in with that, Charlie, do you want to just talk a little bit about Loose Heads, how they've helped you with this challenge and what it is that exactly is that, that they do? 
Um, yes, of course. So um, essentially, well, I mean, I, I can start off with, you know, um, sort of what they're doing and kind of what their sort of whole agenda is about and everything. And the whole idea behind them is trying to, well, trying to make rugby, but also to make sort of sport and that community an area which is a safe space for, you know, people's mental health. And certainly from sort of that perspective, their whole tagline is to tackle the stigma. So they're very much of the persuasion of we need to make sure that it's OK not to be OK. I don't think this this attitude exists as such as much now, but certainly maybe in some circles there is an element around having, you know, that stiff up, stiff upper lip and that, you know, uh, tough outer exterior within a within sports and within particularly with male sports as well there is sometimes a, a worry that showing you know too much emotion you can come across as weak you can come across as overly vulnerable um so i think that that's the main thing that loose heads are trying to change and to tackle as they would say um and i think yeah no they're doing it incredibly successfully they've got loads and loads of different you know sort of ambassadors behind them speaking for them trying to say how they you know the sort of from a, everything from kind of professional to amateur, like, you know, the pressures of trying to, you know, kind of perform or pressures to sort of stay strong in public all the time. I think that's, you know, something they're really trying to sort of address. And, you know, it's incredibly interesting to look at that too. And to try and take away this whole idea that, you know, suffering makes you weak. It's not, again, it's a whole thing of, you know, everybody, you know, goes through it. And the best thing you can do is to try and talk about it and reach out to others. And I think with me, they've also done that really, really well. They were constantly always checking in. They were, you know, saying, oh, you know, how's your training going? How are the legs feeling? Are you, you know, about to collapse yet? <laughs> and again, as I say, those the, the, those are the kind words that get you through those really tough runs. And I think that they are simply, you know, wishing to recreate that in the sporting world, particularly the rugby world. But uh, I think that it's looking to reach out to the rest of the sporting world as a whole too. Yeah, yeah. It, I see them come up a lot at the moment on, in various, well, loads of different places. So that's really, mm. really great. You mentioned uh, recovery there a little bit. How, mm. how how are the legs? How was the body afterwards? How long did it take you to recover? Yeah, OK. I think that the I think that the hardest bit was actually the early stages because I was properly, properly going mental. Cause I was like, no, need to, need to catch up, need to get to where we needed to be, need to chase the miles I've missed from the isolation period and everything. There was one time, I think my housemates were vouch for this as well, where I came in after my last run on the 32 and 24 and basically got, got onto the sofa and collapsed. <laughs> um, they were all great about it. They had, you know, they had dinner ready for me. They, you know, were, made sure I did my ice baths, did my stretching, all that kind of thing. So they were, they, they were another thing were really really helpful for that um but i think that yeah with with the recovery kind of now it's it's feeling i'm on the on the way there i'm wanting to i'm wanting to get back in the gym not sure i'm wanting to run yet but i'm wanting to play rugby and be in the gym so there's that <laughs> i think that might be a long time till i want to go on another long run <laughs> funny enough that was my next question um <laughs> like, like obviously this has been like uh, brilliant and a really inspirational thing like, have you got any thoughts or plans to maybe do something like this again in the future i mean again it's one of those things where i think that for the next for the coming months we obviously have some element of rugby coming back which is incredibly exciting i don't want to you know waste any of that sort of opportunity i get to having something close to a game of full contact rugby um want you know take that head on as much as i can um but i think that you know there's it, it's definitely given me it's definitely given challenges some thought and the fact that my i normally every every summer at least i would normally do something like a half marathon or a triathlon or something like that and i think that because my last two have been sort of self-planned i think that if i am to do another big fitness challenge this summer when the when the off season starts I don't think it is going to be something conventional, as it were. I think yeah. that I will want to do something that is a little bit out of the ordinary and a little bit like this because I can see I can see when it's sort of different the sort of different kind of support you get and the sort of different kind of publicity around it is is extremely exciting. Um, um, so yeah, I think that watch this space and maybe see in the summer <laughs> if I if I start doing some other extravagant fitness challenge. You never know with me. <laughs> Yeah, I will definitely be watching this space. It'll be interesting. Um, uh, so you mentioned the support and the interest that you've had there. How has the fundraising been going? Uh, like how much money have you raised and, and all that kind of stuff? 
It's been absolutely brilliant. We are so, so far ahead of the target that we imagined. Um, I set up myself a target of £1,000 first because I sort of imagined that it would be maybe a little bit more than some of uh, past challenges I've done purely because of the kind of uniqueness of the challenge and the fact that I, it was very much kind of tying into sort of two quite big rugby clubs. Um, so I thought, you know, there would the kind of publicity around it would be perhaps a little bit stronger for this one than it had been for the last few. But honestly, the funding and support has been absolutely overwhelming. We're nearly at, um, we crossed the uh, 2K mark at the end of the challenge and we're now not far off two and a half. So awesome. all I can say from that perspective is, well, a big thank you to everyone who's donated so far and that the support has been completely unbelievable. Yeah, awesome. That's really good. Um, okay, well, listen, Charlie, it's been um, brilliant following your journey, literally, um, <laughs> and um, and hearing your story. And just just congratulations on doing it. Uh, really, is what I want to say. Thank if you. People, Thank you. Yeah, if people want to find out more about you and the challenge and all that kind of stuff, what's the best way for people to do that? So the Great Rugby Run Instagram page is still active. Um, so if people want to follow that, I'm sure there might be some more posts surrounding musing slash if I eventually ever go out and do another run or if anybody makes me do another run, I might might have to put it on there. Um, equally as well, if people want to um, kind of reach out to me and message me, um, LinkedIn and Instagram as well, are both sort of um, social media accounts I'm very active on. Um, so if people are looking to try and find out a little bit more about the challenge and want to talk about it more and find out more from listening to this, then yes, please feel free to reach out. I'd be very happy to answer any questions. Yeah, brilliant. We will link all of that in the show notes below, along with the GoFundMe page. So hopefully we can get, I don't know, if we can get over three grand by the time this thing closes up, that would be, be amazing. Yeah, so that will be really brilliant. Um, yeah. Charlie, it's been a pleasure. As always, one final Thanks question so much, yeah. um, is what, what would you as a rugby person like for Christmas? Um, well, there's one thing that um, I was thinking about for, for Christmas, and I think that it is the traditional Leo Denzian's bus trip that we often do every year. We usually do about two a year, and it will be the first, second, and often the third team as well. We'll all get on a bus and we'll all go away to a game at one club. Um, my dad often comes up for it to visit everybody as well, um, which is brilliant fun. Um, we play the game. We can hope we win, but even if we don't, we'll be back on the bus. We'll do a long pub crawl throughout the whole thing. You know, it will be a it'll be a fun uh, a fun booze up, um, and then we'll you know we'll head out into Leeds, Headingley, and everywhere afterwards. And it's just a great time to sort of spend time with all you know all the lads and you know everybody, and just you know just be silly and be rugby and enjoy. Um, so I think that that is probably if I could pick anything to have for Christmas right now, I would love the one chance to just have another proper leo's bus trip that is a that is a fantastic idea sentiment that's kind of just giving me little chills a little bit because that just reminds me of some of my most favorite moments in rugby were often on the back of a bus on the way back oh, yeah. from an amazing one that's uh that's a very good idea i think that will be widely <laughs> widely echoed by yeah, uh, many I many people so. i would definitely hope so <laughs> yeah, for sure for sure okay mate we will call it uh an end there listeners out there thank you so much for tuning in if you've enjoyed this uh please tell your mates let other people know what we're doing here on the amateur rugby podcast and make sure you go and see charlie and and get on the um, GoFundMe page and go and chuck a little bit of money at him. Literally every tiny little bit of money helps. So whatever you can do would be gratefully received. Um, check us out on the social media channels. We're on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, everywhere. And subscribe as well. Why not? You know, just subscribe. Absolutely. Strongly recommend. Thanks so much for having me, Tim. <laughs> um, and I'd love to hear if you've got a fitness challenge that you will be doing or, or something crazy or mad, I'd love to hear about it. I'm all about this kind of stuff. So please get on the comments or email uh, hello at the amateur rugby podcast.com and let us know. And lastly, because I think there is going to be some rugby being played this coming Saturday, have a great time, everybody, and get out of the way.